This time we are going underground. This time we're looking at foundation engineering. This model is made by BIMO and it's the Bauer GB50 with the DHGV grab system. Out of the box we have the trays and there's also a manual. And luckily the top of the trays tells us which way is top. The two trays are taped together in the factory. So out comes the sharp knife for some intricate surgery. With the tape cut we can separate the trays and there's the model and it's all wrapped in soft paper. Removing the paper you can see that the model is largely assembled in a working configuration. And there are just a few separate parts and that includes the counterweight and some bags with pieces in them. Out of the box there was one part detached from the model and that was a guide wheel for one of the hoses. But the good news is this is a very easy fix. The wheel is put in place and a clip goes in to hold it there. A bit of help from our old friend Sue Perglu and the job's done. Included with this model is a manual and it starts with a parts list. And they are all labelled up. We then have written instructions in German. And that's followed by written instructions in English. The instructions refer to a set of photos and here they are and they're all annotated with part numbers. And overall these instructions set a high standard. Finally, there are pictures of previous BIMO Bauer models. To complete the assembly of the model in a working mode, the first thing we can do is to extend out the tracks to make the machine stable. And then we add on the counterweight blocks to the back of the machine. The rest of the assembly is about adding detail including the winch motors and there's a stepping plate we can fit in outside the cab. Next if we need to climb up on top of the machine we need a ladder and we can fit that by pressing it into place. If we've got up on top of the machine we don't want to fall off so there are some handrails we can fit and there are a number of pieces that go right around the top. All these handrail pieces and the ladder are metal. There's one other item to go in at the top of the machine and that is the exhaust pipe and that just presses into place. Next we add a piece that appears to have lights and or cameras and again it's a good fit and just presses in. Out of the box the boom is essentially pinned and it's hinged but you can lock it by installing this clip. In practice it's very hard to do and it's not actually necessary. Beginning with the tracks they are metal and the drive sprocket is very detailed. The track frames have also been made to a high standard. The cab seems to be all plastic and that therefore includes the grab rail and mirror. The interior detail looks good as does the small graphics on the outside. The metal platform is textured. The metal access ladder has graphics behind and the body panel is detailed including the handle. At the back the counterweight blocks are nicely decorated and the grills on the side are really good. Small graphics add to the detail. Looking on top and there's texturing on the surfaces and the winch drums look good although they would have been even better with more rope on. The giant hose reels are plastic and the colour match of those and the boom rams is slightly off to the metal parts. At the foot of the boom the hose outlets are modelled and the small winch also looks convincing. On the boom the large guide wheels for the hoses are metal and there are more metal pulleys up at the boom top. And the detailing in this area looks very convincing. The big wall grab has got a motor modelled at the top and the structure and the guide plates are all modelled well. Inside is the large hydraulic ram for the grab and moving down to the grab the parts are metal with nicely highlighted teeth. For the functionality we'll start with the metal tracks and they roll reasonably easily by hand. And as we've already seen they are on extendable track frames. 
Rotation of the machine works very well. It feels smooth and precise with no jerking. The grab has five different lines running to it. And two of them are the hoses and the giant hose wheels can be rotated. The two winches at the back can also be operated and to do that you remove the motors. And you can then use the supplied key. But to raise and lower the grab smoothly you really need to be an octopus to operate all five controls at the same time. Unfortunately the Cranes Etc Octopus was unavailable for this video. The other control that needs to be operated is also this auxiliary winch at the bottom of the boom. And it is the trickiest one to operate. To position the grab head accurately there are a couple of features. And the first is to change the angle of the boom. You can have it quite steep or lower it to a shallower angle and the hydraulic rams are good enough to hold the pose. The other fine control the real machine has is the ability to rotate the grab and you can do that on the Model 2. This allows you to position the grab at just the right orientation when it begins digging. The last bit of main functionality on the model is the grab itself and you can open and close the jaws of the grab. Just make sure you don't get your nose or some other sticking out part caught in the grab when you close it. Another way to display the model if you want it is as a transport load. And to do that you've got to first carry out some surgery and cut the lines running to the grab. The ropes are okay because they can be tied back on. But more difficult are the hoses which appear to have a glued connection. So if you do cut the grab off you need to be prepared to do some work to put the grab back on. With the grab off we need to wind in all of the ropes and also wind in the hydraulic hoses onto their big drums. This is quite pleasant to do because the hose spools onto the drum nicely as you rotate it and you keep going until you reach a loose end. Then we will tuck the loose end in to make a neat job. With everything wound in and tidy we can now lower the boom fully and that allows us to disconnect the top section of boom. And there's a pin at the top we just need to pull out. And then the two parts are separated. To transport any machine you need to reduce the transport width. And also lower the transport headroom. So on the model we can do that by taking away the platform outside the cab, the handrails and also the ladder. And at this point we can also reduce the counterweight and leave just two blocks on which reflects what would happen on the real machine. There's still another thing to do and it's great that the model does this. And we achieve it by pushing out a pin under the winch assembly. With that done we can then rotate the whole winch assembly. And again that has the effect of lowering the headroom. And finally we can take off the exhaust. The last operation is to narrow the width by retracting the crawler tracks. And then we can make an interesting display using suitable transport. This is a really nice model of the Bauer GB50 by Bimo. It is a high quality well made model and it's a great combination of careful detailing and well engineered functionality. The result is a flexible foundation engineering model and overall it is excellent. Mm -hmm.